Thank you for joining this introduction to CUTE for MCUs. This presentation will provide an overview of the new features introduced in the last two releases of CUTE for MCUs versions 1.2 and 1.3. We'll also have a quick look into the roadmap for CUTE for MCUs over the coming months. In case you missed our previous posts regarding Cute for MCUs, let's quickly review what it is. Cute for MCUs is a complete graphics framework and toolkit with everything you need to design, develop, and deploy rich GUI interfaces on displays powered by microcontrollers. Cute for MCUs comes with a new hardware accelerated graphics runtime, Cute Quick Ultralight, that's aware of the limited resources on MCU platforms. Applications developed using Qt for MCUs have the same structure as normal Qt Quick applications, but with low memory consumption and optimized CPU processing. This is achieved with a new method for translating QML code to C++ code. This adaptation of the Qt framework significantly broadens the value of Qt, offering extended possibilities for our customers both existing users of Qt and new users. A key part of the Qt value proposition is our ability to offer our customers a true cross-platform development toolkit. Customers are able to save more time and money by using Qt for MCUs. It increases their options relative to target hardware. It allows them to continue using the familiar Qt framework and workflows they're accustomed to, and it avoids code rewrites. Qt for MCUs extends the Qt framework by enabling a completely unified technology approach for an entire range of products. This allows our customers to create that consistent and branded user experience with the same core technology, all without increasing costs or risk delaying the time to market for their products. We've been very productive since the first release of Qt for MCUs adding many new features with our latest releases. These include several updates that will help to simplify the configuration of the development environment. For example, we now have the compiler for these versions automatically visible as an option in our installer. This will automatically install if the chosen board requires it, and it automatically registers with Qt Creator, which means that after installing the configuration within the Qt Creator IDE is that much more effortless. We've now included the list of Qt supported MCU targets easily selectable during installation. In addition, the steps required from the time of installation of Qt for MCUs to actually running an example application on the target hardware has been significantly streamlined. In our first release, 1.0, there were a total of 13 steps. Today, with version 1.3, the number of steps has decreased to five. These enhancements save valuable time, allowing our customers to begin testing and deploying applications much faster. In terms of integrating Qt for MCUs with the Qt Creator IDE, we've listed here some version dependencies between Qt for MCUs and Qt Creator for reference purposes. We recommend that all of our customers utilize our latest version 1.3 with the most recent release of Qt Creator 4.12.4. If a previous release of Qt for MCUs is being used, please refer to the chart and ensure you're using the correct version of Qt Creator. For those of you who are familiar with the concept of kits, to configure any number of deployment devices in the Qt Creator IDE, you'll be pleased to know that we've added automatic configuration for MCU kits so that the effort involved is much less time consuming. Creating and removing MCU kits is now much simpler and straightforward. Select an MCU using bare metal or free RTOS. 
Also, when migrating from a previous version of Qt for MCUs, older kit definitions are automatically replaced with newly configured kits. And there's no need to search for the exact configuration options as the dependencies are now auto-detected. With version 1.3, we're pleased to announce support and integration with Qt's Design Studio. Now, a user of Qt Design Studio can use the newly added application wizard specifically designed for MCUs. By doing this, the QML types and properties that are currently available for Qt for MCUs will be automatically filtered. Those will be selectable for building an application. While the list of QML types available for MCUs is a subset of those offered for non-MCU targets, that list is consistently growing as new releases are made available. One other significant feature now supported in version 1.3 of Qt for MCUs is the timeline. The timeline within Qt Design Studio allows for building smooth transitions and animations between different states for UI components. In any modern user interface, transitioning between states and animating the user interface is highly beneficial. This feature alone significantly extends the possibilities for our customers who want to design and develop user interfaces for microcontrollers. In addition to those new product features, we're very pleased that the memory footprint has improved significantly between versions. Here's a graph that compares version 1.1 with 1.2 as an example. We've tested different application types, and the results show an average decrease in memory footprint of 22% overall. We will continue to bring forth additional improvements as we evaluate our latest release 1.3 and beyond. Qt for MCU's version 1.3 also brings forth another newly supported MCU model the NXP RT1060. Adding newly supported hardware targets with each new release of Qt for MCUs is very high on our list of priorities. We've had great progress stabilizing Qt for MCUs with many new bug fixes in both of our recent releases, 1.2 and 1.3. The links on this slide will allow for viewing the full change log for each of these versions. In terms of our future roadmap, we continue to steadily evolve and have plans to release two new versions within the coming months. Qt for MCU's version 1.4 is due out in early September of 2020, followed by version 1.5 close behind, currently slated for October 2020. Each of these will introduce new features, enhancements, and hardware support to further solidify Qt for MCUs as our offering. We're so pleased for your interest and time to view this brief video and urge you to click on the link within this slide to learn everything you'll need to be successful using Qt for MCUs.